Ah, the great outdoors. There's so many reasons to love going out and exploring what nature has to offer. Like waking up to a sunrise in the morning, sleeping underneath the stars, deep breaths of fresh air, the beautiful scenery, campfires with friends, the list goes on. What are you waiting for? It's a great outdoors. It's fresh air. Hey everyone, it's Ryan from Hot Zenny with a special episode of Fig Ultra. In this episode, we are going on vacation to Michigan's own little hidden gem, the Upper Peninsula. Believe it or not, this place does exist. <laughs> it's easy to forget. But if you are an outdoor enthusiast like my friends and I, there is a ton to do. There's beaches everywhere, beautiful shorelines. It has like a ton of like different geography, but our favorite thing is the waterfalls. There is a ton of waterfalls in the UP. So, of course, we're taking the opportunity to bring our figures with us because we can get some really cool, hopefully cool shots of uh, our figures out in the nature and all these beautiful sights. So, yeah. What's going on over here? So, let's quickly go over what figures I and Dan are taking with us. First up is the Nendroid Rinshima in the anime Yudu Camp. If you're a fan of the outdoors, then you'll definitely love this show. This is the deluxe version, which comes with a few extra camp supplies as well as a tent and a bonfire. Next up, taking a hard 180 from the cute and cozy Yudu Camp, is the Figma Mume from the blood-soaked and nightmare-fueled anime Kabanari of the Iron Fortress. She comes with a bunch of accessories, giving room for all sorts of photo ops. And if you're into darker, grittier themed animes, then this one is worth checking out. Now let's see who Dan is taking. First up is the Figma Ena Toyosaki from the webcomic Little Armory. We were both unfamiliar with the series, but after seeing these figures, we fell in love with the concept and the art style. There are other characters to collect from the series, so don't be surprised if the rest of them also end up in our collection. Lastly is the Figma Ludens, Hideo Kojima's mascot for his company, Kojima Productions. As a fan of his work, this figure was a must-buy for Dan. Also, Death Stranding needs to release already. Okay, now we're ready to go on vacation. But first, we have to pack. So after work, we quickly packed the car because a storm was coming in and uh, we got packed just in time because as soon as we hit the road, the storm came pouring down. We've traveled to the UP a few times before, so we planned our trip around some of our favorite places we visited, as well as some new ones, then mapped out a route that was the most convenient. This is kind of a mega trip because we're hitting all the major spots in the UP. There's not much to mention on our first day up. We were pretty much just heading up to our hotel to stay the night in. But our roof cargo bag did come loose while we were on the highway and we had to pull over to fix that. And then there was a shirtless man aimlessly walking around a rest stop, which was uh, pretty weird. But other than that, uh, it was a pretty smooth trip up. Ha! <laughs> we have light. What I thought was construction turned out to be a child on the floor above us, thumping around from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock in the morning, so uh, needless to say I didn't get any sleep that night. After checking out of the hotel, our plans were to just mess around the city for a little bit for an hour, and then head over the bridge for some breakfast. There is a restaurant called Wienerlicious that has a giant hot dog on top of it. Now most people stop by the bridge to take pictures, but we stop at the giant hot dog. It became a tradition for us to stop there every time. It's now a symbol to state our vacation has officially started. <laughs> We 
we found a tourist trap called Nerd Ferguson's, which specializes in uh, all your pop culture merchandise, stuff like that. They also had figures. Uh, there's Cloud. They had almost some Power Rangers, Mega Man. There's uh, Sora from Kingdom Hearts. And uh, Bakugo and Midoriya. And a very expensive Tracer Figma, overpriced. Also, this is where I got my Space Dandy t-shirt from, so uh, shout out to any Space Dandy fans. The real reason we came here was for the Funko Pops. We have something special planned for one of them. I don't want to give it away just yet, but you will find out in a little bit. The medieval fantasy themed sword shop caught our eye from across the street, so we went over there to check it out. And uh, they had a, quite a bit of different uh, swords and weapons from different movies and video games. It was interesting. We almost bought a throwing axe, but we decided to save our money. So, enough goofing off. Let's cross the bridge and go to the UP. Now it's time to get some breakfast at Java Joe's, which was a little shack that served breakfast food. But the food there was great, the pancakes were light and fluffy, and Dan said his pizza omelette was actually pretty good. And if you're lucky, you might get to meet Java Joe himself. And in Kayla's case, if you have tattoos, he will stop to ask you about them. After some driving, we reached one of our favorite parks in the UP. The Fayette Historical State Park used to be a community that manufactured iron back in the mid to late 1800s. It's the closest thing we have to an actual full-size ghost town in Michigan. Also, it has the best bathrooms in the game, son. The child almost kind of looks like Bobby Hill. Like a female version of Bobby Hill. This show's got some saucy bits. Echo! Every building here is original from the 1800s. The park has renovated them all so visitors can go inside to learn more about the history of the settlement. The limestone cliffs that overlook the park are truly amazing to look at, especially when viewed from the bay. If you've noticed it was getting cloudy out, we checked the weather radar and a storm was heading in our direction. There were a few more buildings and spots to check out, but we unfortunately had to skip them. We wanted to make time to go to the scenic overlooks on the limestone cliff mentioned earlier. What do you think of this rock? That's a rock. No. Well, sort of, but. One of them. The better view. That's a smooth trunk. Yeah. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> Would you hear your family? Well, we don't. By this time, we could hear the thunder rolling in. It's too bad it was so cloudy out, because this is one of the most beautiful sights in the UP, especially during the sunset, when the light reflects off Lake Michigan. Dan actually took some good footage from the last time we visited. This is what it looked like as the sun was going down. As soon as we finished taking pictures, the rain came. We pushed it all the way back to the car, and of course, I had the sunroof cracked open so the inside of the car got wet. We were soaked, but at least we made it to the car before it started to hail. The saloon, Delta County's, oh, it is voted best in Delta County. The best tie. To make up for getting washed out by the rain, we decided to stop for some pizza. After drying off and checking on all our gear, we headed inside. And oh man, was this pizza so good. Especially after a long day of walking around in the heat. Since our entire trip consists of us being constantly on the move, it was tough finding good places to stay. Hotels were the easiest to book because most cabins and cottages require a two night minimum. We really wanted to at least spend one night camping in the woods, and after some searching, we managed to book a rustic cabin in a small nature preserve just outside of town. All right, we're gonna do a quick tour of our cabin lot out here in Little Presque Isle, Marquette, Michigan. We got this. Thank God, this fire's starting to go out, but it was going. Let's see, we came this way. Let's check out this little creek. <laughs> yeah. This is Pride Rock right here. This is nice. Hey, you looking to buy any Funko Pops? They got Kronk. You want Kronk? Go out in the wild, baby. Hey, man, you looking to buy any Funkos? It's fresh, dude. <laughs> Come on, man, buy some Funkos. <laughs> All right, dude, just uh, text me if you want it, all right? All right. See ya. See ya. That's the lake. Some cool big rocks to the other side there. Yeah. Let's check out the cabin first. Devin did a cabin tour. A rustic cabin. There's no power, no electricity. It might be kind of dark in here. We got some bunk beds. Table. Here's all our junk that we carried. There's the bunk beds. Nothing exciting. So we stopped by uh, Nerd Ferguson's in Mackinac City. More like Turd Ferguson's. Turd Ferguson's. Because every, everything was overpriced in there. So I wasted my money and bought a Funko Pop to kill. Now this. There is not a single video on YouTube of a Funko Pop being shot with an arrow. I guarantee it. I have Chuck. There's the Kronk. From what movie is this from? <laughs> Emperor's New Groove. There he is, right behind that beautiful target. There's our pro archer. <laughs> no, <laughs> this is gonna be a, should I just edit out all the misses and get it like on the first try? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably gonna be a few misses. Let's see him. <gasps> We got it in, in his dead, lifeless eye. Sorry, Kronk. You are a funny character. But.
thought was construction turned out to be pine cones falling off the trees onto our roof all night, keeping me awake. Also, we heard the occasional scraping and grunting, which we, uh, hope was from a deer. <laughs> we packed up all our stuff and said goodbye to our cabin, making the trek back to the car. Uh, also, I washed my hair under the drain plug from our cooler using the melted ice water as a shower. That was a first, and I wish somebody could have recorded that because it would have been hilarious to watch in retrospect. Uh, that's some redneck ingenuity for you right there, boy. Alright, our first waterfall of the trip. This one is really cool because it's more of a cascade than a drop. The rocks form a hundred foot slide to the bottom. Like a cool big valley. We climbed down a good set of stairs to get to the base. We hopped over the railing to get a better view. And I gotta say this waterfall looks way bigger in person. And the rocks were grippy kinda like sandstone which made climbing it pretty easy. It was tricky finding the right time to photograph our figures on our trip. When visiting spots like this, you have to keep in mind everyone else that came to view the attractions, so you want to be considerate that you're not ruining their experience or getting in the way of their pictures. There were a few times where we would have liked to take more photographs, but it would have been rude to get in everyone's way. But that's perfectly fine because we also came to check out the scenery. This one was one of the funnest spots we visited. The Black Rocks are a popular spot on the Lake Superior shoreline to cliff jump. The drop is about 20 to 30 feet into the usually frigid water. Standing at the edge of the cliffs, your nerves can get the best of you, but we all faced our fears and took the plunge. And we also had a blast. So this waterfall is probably the most remote and wild ones we have been to on any of our trips to the UP. First we had to drive down a gravel road, which turned into a dirt road leading us to our parking spot. The falls are down in a deep forested gorge which made for some really neat views. We had to walk down a winding trail to get to the bottom, but be careful, one wrong step and you're taking a tumble. We love this spot so much. The seclusion and freedom of no railings or fences let us walk around on the rocks and get some great views of the falls, as well as some great shots of our figures, of course.
it was time to start heading to our new hotel, so back up the hill and to the car we go. So this part I didn't like because the road leading out of the forest was closed off by a gate. Google Maps suggested a new route, which was actually a two-track more appropriate for ATVs and off-road trucks. Any normal car would have had some serious trouble. The sun was starting to set and a few times the map would say we took the wrong trail. But after some slow and careful driving we finally made it to the main road. And thank god we didn't get lost or have to turn around and back travel. First roads, uh, right on the loose side of me. Country roads. They're taking her home. Where it is. Whew, that was a long day and we were wiped out. We couldn't wait to jump into the hotel's hot tub and finally relax. And what I thought was construction was actually, just kidding, the hotel was actually quiet that night. Before we started our day, Dan wanted to stop by the store to pick up the new Fire Emblem game. So we took the time to explore around the city a little bit. Uh, this area is a college town, so there's a cool little quaint downtown area along with some neat little storefronts. We ended up going to a little antique shop that was going out of business to see if there were any interesting items inside. Uh, there wasn't too much, it was mostly sold out. But uh, Kayla did end up buying a big angel ornament for like 10 bucks. <laughs> So we stuffed that in the car and took it with us for the rest of the trip. We are in the Keweenaw Peninsula, which is the northernmost part of Michigan's UP. It's also my favorite area to visit, since it's so far out, you get the vibe that it is still partially undiscovered, and you really feel one with nature. Or it could be all the ghost towns it has, who knows. It's also home to my favorite waterfall in the UP so far. It's not the biggest or most impressive, but it is, what I believe, the most picturesque. The water falls straight down off the rock face into a shallow pool. The trees ring around the whole gorge, giving off just enough shade. I find it very tranquil and relaxing here. It's almost meditative. Now it's time to leave the falls and to head to our next destination. The Keweenaw was known for copper mining back in the late 1800s till mid 1900s. There are many ghost towns still in this area, and a few still have a handful of residents that live there year round. a roadside cemetery that was supposed to have some old graves from the 1800s. So we uh, parked on the side of the road and just took the quick hike back there and uh, we found a few old headstones. there were more gravestones further back, but with all the brush, it was hard to tell. But either way, it was still an interesting hike. Next is the Eagle River Falls, which are blocked by an old dam. Uh, during the time we were here, the water wasn't flowing as much, but I heard in the spring 
the falls can overtake the entire rock formation. And what I thought was construction was actually construction this time. They were building a platform for viewing the falls on right behind us. So the entire time we're trying to look at the falls, we hear all the sawing and buzzing going on. Now we're heading to Brockway Mountain. It's not the highest peak in Michigan, but it has a road and you can drive to the very top. So that adds some bonus points. From here you get an amazing panoramic view of the surrounding area. And if you couldn't tell, it's very windy up there. There is plenty more to do in this area, but it was time to start heading back over to our next hotel. We wanted to make time to stop at another waterfall that just so happened to be on the same route we were taking back. Canyon Falls are known as Michigan's Grand Canyon. The river runs through a tight valley of cracked and broken slate rocks. You can follow the river for a pretty good while, leaving a lot of room for exploration. popular cliff jumping spot here as well. We actually met a group of thrill seekers that were getting ready to jump as we stopped to take some pictures. <laughs> it's our last day in the UP, and of course what I thought was construction was actually the ice machine making noise all night, right outside our hotel room door. Anyways, it's time for some breakfast. The Pitcher Rocks National Lakeshore hosts sandstone cliffs, beaches, sand dunes, waterfalls, inland lakes, deep forests, and wild shorelines. There's a ton to do here. We have been in this area a couple times before, but never have we taken the boat tour. I really never knew how big the shoreline was and how long the cliffs went on for. It was truly amazing looking up at them towering nearly 200 feet above us. And you know what? I'll just shut up and let you watch the tour for yourself. The Bridal Veil Falls. About 20 years ago, a family of beavers built a dam on the creek that feeds Bridal Veil. Pretty much dries it up by the middle of summertime. Almost looks like that section to the left could come crashing down at any moment. Yeah. Well, don't hold your breath. That crash formed over 15 years ago. It hasn't changed much since. Water 
slants back into the trees and those many trains are his headdress. From there, Indian head almost becomes three-dimensional. You can start to pick out a jaw line and even a left ear. Indian head rock is rough at 185 feet high. After the tour, the ice cream shop next door was calling our names. Then there were two small waterfalls nearby that had very short hikes, so we quickly checked them out before being on our way. goodbyes to the UP and drove back over the bridge to Lower Michigan. We're spending one more night up here before we head home. But before we called it a night, we had to stop at whatever the heck this place was. Sasha makes a face. Kind of like a hurt. Just heard the gobbling of the wild turkey. It's a hologram, like plastered, like projected onto this man. Listen to the quack of the male mallard.
eyeballs. I'm not really sure what that is. To be honest. <laughs> Spicy pops. <laughs> That's the only reason we're going to it, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god thank you so much for watching i really enjoyed putting this video together and if you enjoyed it as well please let me know in the comments we would love to do more special episodes like this in the future anyways much love you're the best we'll see you in the next video